If you are planning to use your phone to do a Flipgrid assignment within Canvas for your course, you need to have two things installed on your phone. First, you need to have the Flipgrid app installed on your phone, and you also need to have the Canvas student app installed on your phone. When you're doing this assignment, you have to go to Canvas first. Do not go directly to the Flipgrid app. If you do so, your teacher will not see any of your videos or responses. So always go directly to the Canvas app. Here in the Canvas app, in modules, I see a Flipgrid assignment, and you wouldn't necessarily see from phone, I'm just using this as a sample. You would see the same assignment name if you were online or if you were on your phone. So I'm just, um, I just named it from phone just so I knew which one I was going into as my sample student. So I'm going to click on the assignment. And up at the top, I can see my assignment details. I can see that I haven't submitted this yet. And it says to launch the external tool. So I'm going to click launch external tool. All right, so right now I'm still in Canvas and I can see my course, or sorry, I can see the assignment with the Flipgrid and I can view the instructions. It says, please be sure to access this from Canvas, which we did through the Canvas app. And it asked me to watch the YouTube video. I have some instructions up here from my teacher, take notes on what you notice, wonder what it reminds you of. Then you're gonna click the red record button to record a short video sharing your responses or sharing what you took notes on. And then it asks me to watch and respond to three other classmates. So I can either click on record a response in this rectangle that's above the YouTube video, or I can scroll down and I can click on the circle record a response. Either one is going to work. When I click on that, it tells me that I need to use the app and I need to download the Flipgrid app and enter the flip code to record my video. So I'm going to copy this flip code. So I just press down until I got the copy menu. I'm going to click copy and then I'm going to open an app because I already have my app installed. If you haven't installed Flipgrid to your phone, you would click download first. So I'm going to open an app and here it's asked you open or to add in the join code but it actually automatically skipped. It didn't really require me to put in the join code, but just in case you do get asked, that's where that code was. Now, what it's showing me now is I actually can see myself in the video on my camera, and it tells me step one of four is to record. I have 45 seconds. Tap anywhere to begin. What I see on this is up at the top. I actually can choose which camera I wanna use. Right now, it's the front of my camera, like I'm looking at my screen. If I want to use the camera out the back of my phone, I can click up at the top right. You can see my computer screen. That's on the other side of my camera. But I'm going to go back to me. Down at the bottom of your screen, you will see a few different things. There are effects, and you can add in filters, text. You can use a whiteboard, or you can even draw on your screen. I'm going to close that by um, dragging that down. And then I have the options menu. The options allow me to upload a clip. So maybe I recorded something with my phone camera ahead of time. I could upload that. I can do audio. I could turn audio on or off. And I could also add in notes. So notes allow me to um, see the instructions and I could type in some notes at the bottom if I want to look at that as I am recording. So I'm going to lower that and the one thing that it doesn't look like you can do on your phone is do a screencast. So if your teacher asks you to sh do a screencast to show um, like a Google slideshow to do a presentation, you will need to use a device, a computer or a laptop. If you do not have a Chromebook or a laptop, be sure to request a Chromebook from your school and that's how you'll be able to do the screencast. So what I'm going to do is click on the red record button down at the bottom and it is going to um, start recording me as I'm talking 
And up at the top of the screen, you can see that green line. That green line is showing me how much time I have. I have 33 seconds left. When I'm done, I can press pause. And if I wanted to, I could still add 30 more seconds, or I could redo what I just did by clicking retake at the bottom left of the screen. If I'm completely done, I'm going to click on the image on the very right of the bottom of my screen where you can see it's like a picture of me with a check mark and the green is kind of radiating. So I'm going to click on that to show that I'm done. And here it lets me review what I've seen and I could crop anything if I want to trim um, some things at the beginning or the end off. And so I could click um, anywhere to begin. And if I'm good with how it is, I could delete, I could add more, I could mirror it or rotate what I'm seeing. So if you film something and it's showing up in the wrong direction, you could always um, rotate. And then I'm going to click the green button at the bottom right when I'm ready to go to move on. And this is the part where it asks you to create a selfie. It says tap anywhere to begin. You could add any effects. If you want to add a filter, you could add a filter to your screen. There's a bunch of different ones to choose. The Lego one's kind of fun. Um, I could choose where it like makes things different color. It could be in um, grayscale or black and white. So I could choose, um, I could add other effects like frames, text, drawing, etc. I can click on options and select a particular um, frame that I might want to use as my selfie. And that was not the best one, but that's okay. I could retake if I need to. I'm just going to continue on by pressing the green check mark on the right. And here it allows me to um, submit anything to submit my video, but I can edit my selfie. I can, it automatically takes my first name and my last initial. You will have your email address on here. You could add a title to your video. So you can have a description or like a keyword or key idea that your video is about. And then you can add any links. So if you need to link to like a Google Doc or something, you could add that link there. Up at the top right, you'll see that there is a download if you want to download your video. But I am ready to submit and turn it in. So I'm going to click the blue submit at the bottom right of my screen. And it was pretty quick. It said success. Your video is posted in the topic. And I can share my video if I want to send it to someone. But I'm going to click return to now. When I'm here, I can see that I'm in the topic. I can, I'm watching my video. And if there were other students who've submitted, right now I'm the first who submitted, um, you can see other student videos and you can comment on other student videos. So in the instructions it said I needed to watch three other videos and comment on them. So I would be able to scroll to see other videos. Um, right now I'm the only video that has been submitted. But let's say that this was your classmate that you were watching. You can click add a comment, which is right underneath their video. And when you click add a comment, it will record you giving a video response back. And you have all of the diff same features that you did when you recorded your initial video. But this is a like comment or response back to another student's video. When I go back to Canvas and I pull down to refresh the screen, I can see that I submitted my assignment on August 20th at 1.33 p.m. So I know that I have turned in or created my um, initial post. This will only say submitted or once you've completed your first initial post, it doesn't count whether or not you have made comments on other people. So even though it says submitted, make sure that it, you have completed all of the parts of the assignment that your teacher has asked you to do.